Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Scher, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Transcriptions as well as Health Optimization Medicine and Practice. Today, I thought I'd give a little bit of a deep dive on methylene blue in clinical practice. We're the first company, Transcriptions was the first company to come out with a commercial product back in 2020. And so you have a lot of clinical experience now on how best to use the methylene blue in clinical practice. And I want to specifically focus on how you can use it in the context of other tools, techniques, and modalities. For me, I've been involved in hyperbaric oxygen therapy for many, many years. This is a technology that helps enhance the amount of oxygen in the circulation. When you have more oxygen in circulation, you can make more energy, you can improve multiple things, including mitochondrial function, decrease inflammation, create new blood vessels, stem cell release, improve immune system function, and others. The challenge, though, is that hyperbaric therapy is stimulating a huge amount of more oxygen in circulation. And as a result of that, you're creating the stress on the body with all this extra oxygen. So the stress is in good parts and bad parts, because for one person, it might be good stress, and for another person, it might be not so good. If they don't have the capacity to take all that oxygen and then neutralize it all with antioxidants specifically. And so what I found to be a fantastic combination here is methylene blue ahead of a hyperbaric exposure before hyperbaric therapy. Low doses, 4, 8, 12 milligrams, can really do a great job supporting that mitochondrial function so that when you enhance the amount of oxygen in circulation, the mitochondria can tolerate it and they can utilize it effectively to help you make more energy, detoxify, and also see the downstream benefits of a hyperbaric protocol. Typically, you're not going in a chamber once or twice. Oftentimes, you're going in for weeks at a time if it's a chronic issue. And so in these chronic issues, it's especially important, but even in the short term, it can be very helpful too. But chronically, if you have a chronic brain injury, for example, the brain is dysfunctional. The mitochondria aren't working very well. And so what you can do is bring in the methylene blue at these low amounts, and you can improve and support mitochondrial efficiency while you're trying to enhance the capacity to make more energy, enhance the capacity to create this framework that can help now build a new muscle, brain, connective tissue, heart, all those things. Because what can happen in a hyperbaric protocol is that you rebuild bone, muscle, heart, brain, all of these things. But you won't do it well if you don't have the machinery available to be able to do this. So long term, I use a process called health optimization medicine, which is a nonprofit organization that's training practitioners like me to optimize health rather than focus on treating disease, looking at cellular markers called metabolomic markers, the real-time assessment of what's happening cellularly, especially in my area, which is the capacity for people to make energy. So methylene blue comes in there, supports that whole process quickly, but long-term, to really optimize the mitochondria, you have to work on diet, lifestyle, vitamins, minerals, nutrients, cofactors, gut health, all these things are extremely important to help see a long-term benefit from a hyperbaric experience, in my opinion, because over the long term, you need all these processes working well together to really see that long-term benefit. But in the short term, when you're really working with people right now, that methylene blue can go a long way at helping them feel better very, very fast and support their mitochondria at the same time. Another technology that I use a lot along with methylene blue is red light. Red light exposure about a 680 nanometers, so that comes from the sun, especially in the mornings, or your red light panels if you have them at home, like I do. That spectrum of light combines with methylene blue to enhance the capacity for you to make energy, especially at cytochrome oxidase or complex four in your mitochondria. So that combination of photonic energy and methylene blue enhancing electron flow into complex three and complex four enhances the amount of energy you make. So if you take some methylene blue and then wait about 30 to 45 minutes and go outside in the sunlight, or you go in front of your red light panels, you're gonna see and feel an energy enhancement. The key is that low doses, you're gonna feel energy, focus, sustainable energy, endurance, all those things. Interestingly though, at higher doses, you can use methylene blue as what's called a photosensitizer, so you can actually use higher doses of methylene blue over a milligram per kilogram, like 50 to 70 milligrams, alongside red light exposure, typically more high intensity red light, 
to treat infections. And we know this actually very well from literature for many, many years, that these higher doses of methylene blue, along with the red light, cause more stress on the system to actually kill bugs. And not only bacteria, but fungus and viruses. And there's actually been good studies looking at coronaviruses specifically, and how high doses of methylene blue with the red light in combination is fantastic for this particular mechanism. So mostly I use red light, low doses of methylene blue as an energy synergizer. So a common combination for me is methylene blue, 45 minutes later or so, red light exposure to activate mitochondria as well, so synergistically, and then directly into a hyperbaric chamber. So that triple combo, that trifecta, is one that I use all the time in clinical practice. There's many other tools and technologies that you can use alongside methylene blue. I think the main thing to always remember is that when you're using methylene blue, you're supporting both the energy and detoxification systems. So if you're using anything else that's enhancing energy, you can also use methylene blue. If you're also using anything that's gonna enhance detoxification, you can also use methylene blue as well. So the cool thing about it is that it's very, very versatile and low doses are the key here, everybody. Low doses over maybe a short period of time or maybe a little bit longer, depending on how much support people need. But if it's hyperbaric therapy, I'm using it almost always now at these lower doses and combining it with red light exposure as well. Toxic relationships, toxic food, pesticides, and our list goes on and on. Toxic light, smoke, etc. So the main thing that's happening cellularly as a result of this is inflammation. And if you want to address inflammation, you have to do this in multiple different ways. But the, my perfect stack for inflammation that's going to help you right now is methylene blue plus cordycepin. Methylene blue works in the mitochondria to help make the mitochondria more efficient, to mop up free radicals and decrease inflammation. And then the cordycepin at night increases sleep drive. So cordyceptin's from the cordyceps mushroom. Cordyceps as a mushroom has been around for thousands of years in Chinese medicine. And this cordycepin is the main active ingredient, but in very small amounts, just 0.03% of the mushroom. But this is the particular compound that's been studied. It's anti-inflammatory. It can potentially be anti-cancer, anti-allergy, and it's an immune system modulator because it's also an anti-infective. In addition, it's working profoundly on that inflammatory modulation, as I mentioned. TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, these are all modulated or increased by what's called the NF-kappa-B pathway in the body. Methylene blue can work on it during the day, and cordycepin, even more profoundly, can work on downregulating that whole pathway at night. It also increases a pathway called AMPK, which is AMP kinase is the, is the full name, where that's an anti-inflammatory pathway as well, helping you make more energy efficiently throughout the day, even if you took cordycepin at night, which is super cool. And it also downregulates the pathway called mTOR, which is a regulatory pathway that increases growth. Um, we need mTOR, but we also need to downregulate it as well so that it doesn't get overactive. And in many of us, if you have insulin resistance, for example, insulin is a growth factor. So many people have a dysfunctional mTOR system because of insulin resistance over time. So my stack for people that come in to my practice with inflammation immediately while we're doing dietary changes, lifestyle changes, while we're checking their hormones, their gut, their metabolomic markers to optimize vitamins, minerals, nutrients, and cofactors, immediately they get started on methylene blue, low dose during the day, four, eight, 16 milligrams. We titrate the dose to see what works for best for them. And then we can take it either once or twice a day, depending on what they need. For most people, it's best to take it in like eight o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So now taking it too close to bedtime, some people will get more wakeful for it. Some people don't, but most people do get a little bit more wakeful. That's one of the things, that's one of the ways it works. So methylene blue in the morning, sometimes early in the afternoon, and then cordycepin at night, typically an hour before you go to bed. So that's gonna help with anti-inflammatory pathways. It's gonna help with immune system modulation, anti-infective, and it's got these really cool ways of potentially working on an infection and cancer, which mean that it can actually block the replication of things that are fastly replicating. So blocking the replication as an adenosine agonist, it works just like adenosine in the body, can be profoundly affected. So the cordyceps at night, methylene blue during the day, is an immediate way for me to work with people to get them anti-inflamed stat.
I was once giving a lecture in 2019, and I asked the audience to raise their hands if they were taking supplements. 98% of the people that were in the audience raised their hand. Not surprising, it was a health conference. But then I asked another question, and this is the most important. How many people were taking supplements that they actually needed because they used blood work and other types of analysis to understand exactly what they need at the exact doses that they needed? And about 50% of people didn't raise their hand again. This is a common issue. There are so many supplements, so many different things you can do on a day-to-day -day basis. You're getting barraged by influencers talking about sleep stacks and hormone stacks and, and everything else in between. But the key is to measure what you need and take what you need related to measuring and then following those measurements over time because your needs are going to change over time. As you get older, as your stress changes, as you go to a foreign country and get a parasite, these all things happen to all of us. It's the nature of being human. Things are not the same. As we all know, like the one thing that we can always bet on in life is that everything is going to change all the time. So that's why you have to monitor these things over time and check to see what you need. So do not guess, measure what you need and take what you need and follow it over time. Once you have that base, that foundational base of supplements that you're taking because you've measured what you needed, in our world, this is using a science called metabolomics, which is looking at small molecules that are happening real time in your cells that are helping with energy, helping with detox, fatty acids, heavy metals that can muck up the system, minerals, etc. So you can measure all of these things, micronutrients like B vitamins as well, and then you can optimize that foundation. Then from there, once you have that foundational set of supplements, then you can add on various things that you may not be able to test for, things like adaptogens, for example, like rhodiola or ashwagandha or others or cordycepin that can help adapt the system better to stress or to detoxification, inflammation. But if you don't have that base level set first, you're just kind of pissing in the wind is what it comes down to because you're not really working on what's basically going on, the foundation. It's basic but it's comprehensive and it's foundational. So just remember that if you're taking supplements, the majority of the ones that you're taking, you should measure what you need and take the amounts of them that you need and then follow those levels over time. Jet lag sucks, but it doesn't have to. Jet lag is multifaceted. You're changing time zones. You're on airplanes, you're low oxygen states. You're around people that may not be well and maybe coughing all over you. You have recycled air. Then you're in a new time zone with new times of day and night and your microbiota are all messed up because you know, your gut actually it has a circadian rhythm just like the rest of you. So for me, my particular prescription's jet lag stack is follows. Number one, methylene blue. Methylene blue for jet lag is great because it's going to help support your capacity to make energy even if there's less oxygen around. On an airplane, you're pressurized to 6,000 feet if you're on a Dreamliner or 8,000 feet under regular circumstances. And 8,000 feet is about 16% oxygen. Sea level is about 21% oxygen. So if you're coming from sea level, you go immediately on an airplane and they close the doors and they start pressurizing the plane, why do you get tired? The main reason you get tired is that you're suddenly hypoxic. <laughs> and so what you don't want to do is become hypoxic on a plane if you can avoid it, or at least less so. And so what methylene blue can do is it can help you make energy from less oxygen for the period of time that you're on the plane. And so it also decreases inflammation. It also protects you from radiation because you're higher up in, in altitude and you're also in an aluminum can as well. And so all these things are causing more radiation exposure. It also decreases your risk of infection. So we have a whole protocol on our website. You can check it out for methylene blue, but typically you want to dose it about four hours before you get on the plane, and then every four hours when you get on the plane. The amount that you take kind of depends on your tolerance and time of dose you'd already take, but in essence, you want to kind of time it in a way that you're finding a way to help get you transition to the new time zone that you're going to. So, and we have a whole way of doing this. So if it's 9 a.m. at your destination, you can take a certain amount of methylene blue. If it's 12 p.m., or 5 p.m. at your destination, you take a different type, a different amount of methylene blue. But in addition to methylene blue, I also use a ton of Trocom. Trocom is our product that helps calm down the nervous system, relax that sympathetic activation. Flying is not a calm process for most people. It's stressful getting yourself to the airport, your bags, 
through TSA having to take off your shoes. If you don't have pre-check, please get pre-check. That's kind of a, a no-brainer, right? But and the whole process is very stressful. And sometimes you're like running to the airplane. And if you're me, you have four kids. And when they were very young, it was very stressful. Taking Trocom downregulates your nervous system. So you're back in the parasympathetic mode. So you're going to be less stressed. Your hormones are going to be more regulated, your cortisol specifically. And so you're going to be calmer and your immune system is not going to be on high alert and stressed. So Trocom has been great for that. I use it all the time when I travel. Now, when I get to my destination, that's when I use TroZ and Tromune. TroZ is great for circadian rhythm transition. So it's got eight different ingredients in there, all working on comprehensive sleep support. It has a little bit of melatonin, 5-HTP, but also cordycepin from the cordyceps mushroom that increases deep sleep and is anti-inflammatory. Hanokiol from the GABA system, agarin from the GABA system, those two are working together. Hanokiol is from magnolia bark. Agarin is from the psychedelic mushroom, the amanita mushroom. Not psychedelic at low doses, not toxic at low doses. Fantastic long-acting GABA agonist. Then we also have CBD and CBN in that compound, in Trozy as well. It's fantastic for jet lag because it's going to reset your circadian rhythms fast. And then Tromune. Tromune is high-strength cordycepin that's going to help as an anti-inflammatory, increase deep sleep. You take it at night as well. Um, and it's also going to improve immune system function, prevent you from getting infection. So for me, when I travel, I take the cordycepin or Tromune. I take either 75 to 150 milligrams of that nightly when I'm on a, a trip. And in my house, we call it the green stuff. My wife, she will take Tromune when she feels like she's getting sick because it seems to mitigate that whole process and stop it in its tracks. Now, it's not the only thing, of course. This is not the only things that I do when I travel. I'm hydrating. I'm eating clean food. I'm making sure that I'm taking time to relax, getting outside, getting light, grounding, trying to change my circadian rhythms even before I get on the plane so that I'm changing my time zone even before I get there if I'm changing time zones. So good news for me, I live in Denver or just outside of Denver. I'm already at 5,500 feet where I live. So the jet lag for me is already going to be better because I'm not going from zero feet of seawater to 8,000 pressurization. But in essence, my stack with traveling, to sum up, methylene blue, hands down, trocom to calm down the nervous system when I'm traveling. And then when I get to my destination, tromune and troz for sleep. Finally, the last one that I'll use is our blue canatine the day after. So when you're getting to your new destination, you need to wake up your brain. Blue canatine with a combination of methylene blue, nicotine, caffeine, and CBD. Supportive, but stimulating. So you feel like you can get on and get done when you need to get done. So Dr. Ted, who's our founder, he formulated blue canatine so that you could get off an airplane, have high level meetings, do what you need to do, and see the benefits immediately without having a detrimental effect. So travel safe, travel prepared. Many things we didn't talk about today, but the transcription stack will get you a long, long way to feeling better and rip off that jet lag maybe before it even starts.